Hi, I'm John Atak. And I'm Michelle Haslam. And um, we are carefully matched visually, <laughs> quite accidentally. Um, Spike told us that we got to wear something dark, you know, so that she can run little things across the screen. So, um, I wanted to just do something short because uh, since last we spoke, I, I went and looked at three little videos um, to get a bit more of an idea of the new Kadampa tradition. And I do think it's a very good idea to to watch videos to to see how people present themselves because you know, we interpret the, the written word in a different way. Mm. And uh, so I looked at two monks uh, um, based in this country, in England, and um, one of them was a talk called Knowledge is Valuable, but Experience is Precious. Now, I'm not sure why the word but is in that sentence. I would have used the word and, mm. because I don't think there's a contradiction between knowledge and experience. So I think the two should be united, but that's just me quibbling. <laughs> And this is um, Jen Kelsang Reptan. Uh, Kelsang, as you say, you know, as all people in Australian universities in Monty Python are called Bruce, uh, these guys are all called Kelsang for some reason. I'm not really sure what it means. And he said, a bodhisattva, which is the aim of Buddhism to become an enlightened bodhisattva, is a friend of the world, someone who feels affection towards every person, every creature, and one who feels that everybody everywhere matters, that no suffering is to be ignored, that no suffering is insignificant, that there is not time to truly rest and stop until all suffering is ended. Now, I do think we have to rest occasionally myself. <laughs> um, but what interested me was that the guy saying this, and you know, by all means, go and have a look at it yourself, didn't seem to me to be in a, a, a serene state of mind. He seemed to me to be quite anxious and, you know, not simply the anxiety of sitting in front of a camera, but that there was something that he was trying not to experience within himself. And I think if, I think there is a terrible danger in believing that um, some you know, in the future, this will have gone away and I don't need to worry about it. Mm. Uh, the whole mindfulness approach to ignoring your problems. Mm -hmm. um, then there was another uh, YouTube uh, called New Eight Steps to Happiness. And I haven't yet read The Eight Steps to Happiness. <laughs> um, I've read The Way to Happiness by Oren Hubbard, which right. is probably reasonably yeah. similar. And in this, the guy said, that's what we're here for, a revolution for the mind. The essence of this whole retreat is loving kindness. And finally, um, Geshe Kelsang Gyatso himself, um, who I think he's called Geshla, is that mm -hmm. right? Generally is the familiar term for him. Hubbard is called LRH. Right. right. Um, Through our ignorance, we engage in actions that cause suffering. He then says, very like Buddhism. And I, I didn't really quite get what that mm. was about. Uh, encouraging, I think he was perhaps suggesting that New Kadampa tradition is very like Buddhism, which uh, is a bit odd. Yeah, it is a bit, yeah. Hmm. But whatever, encouraging people you should love each other, help be a good person. Now, putting aside the kind of Yoda way of saying that, <laughs> Yeah. the reason that I put these things down was that, that you're certainly receiving, have received a certain amount of negative attention. Yes, you could say so. From NKT, yeah. which is completely... You know, if this is their intention, a bodhisattva is a friend of the world, someone who feels affection towards every person, every creature. This is not true. Mm. This is not what they're doing. This is a pretense. Mm. And I just wanted to underline that. You can get a free copy of uh, Geshe Kelsang Gyatso's um, work, Modern Buddhism, The Path of Compassion and Wisdom, online. Have a look at that. Um, it's also worth saying, you, you said before that... Um, Yatso has not actually been seen since 2013. No. And uh, curiously, this YouTube dates from 2013. Hmm. Uh, it's often the case that towards the end of the great master or guru or founder's life, they disappear. Um, with Rajneesh, of course, he took so many drugs that he couldn't talk anymore. So he pretended publicly for years that, that he had a vow of silence, but actually right. would sit and chatter with 
Maranand Sheila and tell her what crime to commit next. Mm. Um, Ron Hubbard appears to have gone through a period of dementia and so that Yatso is not appearing, not even on, on film, not even from the security of his own. No, um, and I, I think um, most people were uh, quite alarmed by the recent video um, where they were opening the temple and um, they've asked followers to talk about how he is really there in their hearts and minds. The elephant in the room being that he's not there. That there's no elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> I think that was to control the narrative. Mm. Um, yeah, or to say it doesn't matter. You know, he's not really abandoning us or, you know, we're not really lying to you because he can be in your heart and your mind, so it's okay. Um, yeah, so most ex-members... Some believe that he has actually died already quite a while ago, possibly. Um, how people hide a dead body, I don't don't really know. Um, it depends what country you're in. If you're in Tibet, you chop them up and feed them to vultures. Mm, That's the traditional funeral. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but I mean, most ex-members seem to believe that um, he's, yeah, suffering from dementia and mm. therefore he wouldn't be able to be seen in public because um, that would lead people to lose their faith in enlightenment and him being an enlightened being. Mm. Apparently they're not supposed to get degenerative diseases. No, well, the, the book of the great decease um, um, puts forward the idea that if Ananda had asked the Buddha to live forever, he would have done. Mm. But uh, sadly, Ananda didn't, and so he's blamed for it. But, um, you know, to, to, to burst any myth about the uh, physical health of such a person, um, the, the, the Buddha appears to have, have died uh, having eaten tainted meat. Mm. That, that's uh, what we're told. Um, so, and, and it's despicable, this notion of the perfected being, to me, that that, that was not what the Buddha was, was teaching, as I understand it. He was teaching a path to um, serenity and enlightenment, but he was not teaching immortality, no. you know, which is much more of a sort of Chinese Buddhist tradition. Okay, well, that's that little bit, and um, we'll come back and say some more little bits in a moment. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.